Good morning, everyone. It's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. First of all, I would just really like to say thank you for subscribing to this channel. It is really fun to bring you some projects and some know how to's and just help fill your day with some crafting goodness. So today's project is one that I'm really excited about because I'm going to be using the Cricut Infusible Ink to create two summer bags. So this is the third video in my Cricut Summer Series. And I'm actually not real sure how many are going to be in this series, but as long as I am coming up with some great summer crafts, you will have a Cricut Summer Series. So this is just a little bag here that I got at the Dollar Tree and I've actually had it for a little while and I thought it might be just a really handy bag for summer and you know just be able to throw some lip gloss, keys, some identification and some money and that way I'm not carrying my normal heavy bag around um, during the summer. So I'm going to be putting a design on that and then I have a canvas bag that I picked up. Actually, I picked this one up at Walmart. Yes, at Walmart. It is their Hello Hobby brand. And this was on clearance, actually. This is really thick and substantial. This is a very well-constructed bag. And um, so I just wanted to make a, a bag for summer. So like going to the pool, maybe going tubing one day, um, going to the park, kind of whatever, like a catch-all bag. So this I thought would be a great um, idea to make for summer. And so I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to be using the Cricut Infusible Ink. And to use Infusible Ink, you do have to have a particular substrate material to put it on and I'll talk about that in a moment but in addition to the ink you do need uh, parchment paper or butcher paper actually I'm sorry this is butcher paper and then um, a cardboard insert this will go inside the bag to protect from bleed through we have our Cricut Easy Press mat and I will be using my Cricut Easy Press 2 I've got some uh, cutting mats so we can cut out the designs. I'll be using the Maker 3 today because of the size. And then I just have some regular tools. So I've got scissors, measuring tape, tweezers, a weeding tool, but really a weeding tool isn't really recommended for infusible ink, but sometimes I just like to have it out just in case. And then a fresh roll, uh, a fresh lint roller. One thing that I do want to mention about your materials um, is, so a lot of times when you are searching for materials to use with infusible ink, you will look for sublimation blanks. And these, I've just picked up one at Dollar Tree and Walmart. The, this is just a canvas bag and so is this one. And neither one of them, actually, I, that is not true. The one at Walmart, that is the only one that came with some the material and it says that it is 100% cotton. So infusible ink, the way it works is that when you heat it up, it kind of turns into this gas-like sub substance and then as it cools down, it, it infuses itself into the fibers of your material. So we need a um, the higher, the polyester count, the better. This is 100% cotton. So one thing that I like to do, and I did this on both of these, is I have like a, a scrap piece of infusible ink and I will snip off a tiny little um, square or parallelogram shape, or actually, I'm sorry, this is really a trapezoid. Couldn't help it, I'm a geometry teacher. So I just like to snip off a tiny little corner and then I will do a test patch. So this is the Pink Lemonade um, this, uh, infusible ink and I put it on the inside and I did the Easy Press Mini 
on high, probably for about a good 30 seconds or so to test to see if it would take the infusible ink. And this one did a great job. There was no ink left on the carrier sheet of the infusible ink and the, the uh, ink is just really nicely well um, adhered into those fibers or infused into those fibers. And it's on the inside, so it won't be visible to anybody. And I'm the only one that will know it is there. But I like to do a test patch before getting started on a project like this because you never know what you what is really going to work. And this is way too expensive to cut it all out, put it on your your bag or t-shirt or whatever and have it not work. So, um, you know, regular vinyl, the permanent, the HTV, all of that. It's like, I don't really do test patches with those, but I do do test patches with the infusible ink. And so I did another one on the inside at the very bottom. And that just looks really, really nice. Okay, so it worked really, really well. And I'm very surprised because it says that this is 100% cotton. And I wasn't real sure that it would take the infusible ink, but it did. Okay, so let's go to design space. And I'm gonna show you the designs that we're putting on these bags today. And I've got a couple of tips to share with you before we cut them out and get them put onto our bags. Okay, so I am in design space and basically I went into my home screen. I went to discover and I just searched up in images and projects for, I did the word summer and I did the word uh, adventure. I also searched adventure tote and summer tote or and maybe I cho chose bag at one point, but um, essentially I found these two designs in design space. Okay, so a couple of things that uh, I have prepared for the project. Um, one of them is, let's see, where is it? Okay, so what I did is I went into shapes over here and I grabbed two squares and I placed them on my canvas and I sized the square and now a rectangle in the size of my bags. So this big tote, I have it sized at 18 by 12 and this is just for design purposes. It will not show or cut uh, at all. I'm just using it for visual. And then same thing with my small little bag. I have this one is at five and a half by six, and this one will also be hidden. I just wanted to make sure that they would fit in the space and it allowed me to resize the large images. So the next thing I did is, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and hide that square. And I'm gonna hide that rectangle. The next thing I did is I created Let's see, three rectangles. And these rectangles are behind the image. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I like to save um, as much of my material as possible because infusible ink is very, well, I say very expensive. Infusible ink can get expensive if you waste it. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to use these boxes here as a sizing guide so that when I go to my make screen and I go to cut these out, I know exactly how much to place and where to place it. And that way I can, I can um, not have like this huge ginormous black area here from the infusible ink sheet. I can just put a small rectangle up here. I'll know the size and a small rectangle down here, I'll know that size. And then the one in the middle, I that particular rectangle here, I will place that as well. And it will allow me to be able to cut everything out 
And basically these are acting like weeding boxes and I won't have to waste a bunch of extra infusible ink sheet. And then I did the same thing with my summer. And then with summer, let's see, I have a blue square and this is going to be basically my weeding box for the summer words. Now I'm using the mermaid, what is it called? Uh, it is called the mermaid rainbow and I really wanted a rainbow effect but I wanted to use infusible ink. So what I have on hand is a mermaid rainbow sheet. And so these will all be um, attached together and then I will have the black. So I did a rectangle for that one as well. And these are just gonna act like placement boxes when I go to my make screen. Okay, so a couple of things that I need to do. On the summer portion, all right, um, I am actually going to grab the vibes and I'm going to bring it down here, kind of outside of that group. And I'm going to bring it back to the front just so I can see. And so I have the vibes highlighted in my layers panel and I'm going to grab that black rectangle that I made and I'm just going to attach them. Okay, and I'm going to leave it where it is. I don't want to move it. Um, I'm going to then put that back into my summer grouping. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I am going to move the blue square into my grouping. Let me move this to the back so we can see our word. There we go. And then what I want to do is I'm going to have the blue square highlighted and I'm going to click on each of these words in my layers panel that say summer. Now I'm going to click attach because I want all of these to cut out together as one big box, so to speak. When I checked into the design earlier, each one of these words is its own image which is wonderful because it would cut exactly like that, but all the different colors means I would have all of these different mats. I don't need all of these different mats, so I'm just going to change them by clicking attach, and then you'll notice that it actually grabbed everything. So I'm going to take the vibes, and I'm gonna move that outside of the blue it and this is going to have to change we'll change that to black or let me change it to gray okay so what's going to happen is this particular box is going to cut out of my infusible ink sheet and then these words summer okay and when i weed i will weed off the blue box portion leaving just the words they will all be in the place where they need to be and then i will have this vibes portion okay all right so the next thing that i want to do is kind of the same thing with this particular image over here um, now before i do that i'm going to move this down couple things needs to happen in this group. Let me ungroup those three elements. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take yes, and then I'm going to take the brown, reddish brown box. I'm going to go ahead and um, select both of them. I'm going to go to align center, and then I'm going to attach those. And it basically, I'm just wanting to create essentially like a little weeding box for this. And then we will pull off all of that negative space. Um, then, let's see, I need these. Okay, so this box needs to come here. And this box will need to come here. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to click on align center horizontally. Okay, so then I'm going to click attach. And then what will happen is that these will 
print, uh, they'll cut out just like this. The only thing that I actually am thinking about over here is that, um, let me look at something really quickly. Okay, so the only thing that I'm thinking about right here is this word summer, the I, the tittle for the I and the B, this kind of overlaps with those letters. And now that I'm thinking about this, I am thinking that I might need to um, slice that portion out. So before I do that, let's duplicate our summer. I'm going to move this vibes over here on top. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Going to put that right there. So what I'm going to do, since I can only press the infusible ink like one time, I am going to use this second vibes to slice out the spacing that I need for that word. So let this original summer with its weeding box, I'm going to hide that for a moment. Okay, I'm gonna click on summer, the one at the bottom, and I'm going to click on the word vibes. And I'm going to click slice. Slicing is a great tool to help you move things out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove, so this summer is kind of um, sliced out. Get rid of all of this. What'll happen is I will be able to put the vibes in that particular spot. So let me bring back in the vibes so you can see it. When I weed away the blue, and I weed away the gray boxes. The vibes will be left over, and then I can piece that onto here in the places where I have sliced out. And then that way I can just press it all at one time. Let's get our make screen up and make sure that everything looks the way that it should. So I'm gonna click on make. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have a um, vibes box. Now the box will get weeded away. And then now no, this will be how much I need from the black infusible ink sheet. So that'll be fine. I will end up just keeping the word vibes with the little tittle for the eye. I do need to select mirror since we are using infusible ink. And then the next box, okay, it says, the words say and to new adventures and you can see these little weeding boxes now this is all of the area that i need for that so i could just put a slice of um, black infusible ink here and one here or i could do one big square that is five and a half by six and then just cut this away and because i'm using the black infusible ink and i want to cut as little as possible. I'm going to mirror that. I'm going to move this to the first mat. And then I'm going to move this down. Okay. And what this will allow me to do is I can place all of the black infusible ink elements on the same cutting mat and that will save some time. Let's see. Then our, and everything's mirrored, so that's good. This mat will go away once we start cutting. My third mat is the yes. I'm going to move that to the first mat. And I'm going to notice that it automatically mirrored it for me. And I'm actually going to place that. I'm just going to put it down over here in this corner. And that'll just keep it away. So these three elements will be in the black. I'll move that up a little closer. And then this will be the rainbow cheetah. 
and I can just have it cut all at one time, then that means that maps two and three will go away. And then we will go over here. So this says summer. And then here is our summer that I had um, sliced out. And I actually am going to move that to the first blue mat. And I'm going to move it down. I'm going to put it right here on this particular summer. And then I'm going to move it down to about right there. And I think I'm going to zoom in just to see that it looks like it is lined up. All right, that looks good. Okay, so this will all cut as one thing now. So I'm actually only cutting two mats when it comes down to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare those mats so that we can get them cut. So this is ready to go, and my, my mermaid stuff is ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead, let's go back to our make screen. Make sure everything is mirrored there. Go down here to our summer. I'm glad I'm checking because this is not mirrored, and I gotta turn that on. Okay, so that's good. Summer is mirrored and the vibes is mirrored. So the next thing I'm gonna do is hit continue. And this is gonna to connect to our maker. Okay, once it connects to our maker, you can see I have infusible ink bookmarked. So I'm just gonna click on that. I will get a warning that says, make sure the mirror is turned on, the material is ink side up. And then I'm going to hit remember material settings and that way I won't have to change it when I go to the next mat. And I, I think that is good. I think I'm gonna actually do more pressure. Okay, you could do it at regular pressure, but I think a lot of times with infusible ink, I do more pressure. All right, we're gonna get this loaded and cut out and then onto our bags. Okay, it's all done cutting. Now, before we go to weeding and pressing, which actually won't take very long, I want to show you on the heat guide. Um, and by the way, you can find your heat guide by going to your home screen in Design Space and clicking on heat guide, and it will take you here this is where you will select the item or uh, the press that you're using. We're using the Cricut Easy Press 2, which is selected. We're doing an infusible ink transfer sheet. We're putting them on tote bags. And then when you click apply, it gives you, you know, how everything needs to look. It gives you a visual picture. It gives you the, the uh, temperature, the seconds, firm pressure, slowly remove liner when cool to touch. It tells you the supplies and the order in which you stack them on your material. It tells you how to prep everything, application, and it does tell you it's a warm peel and then tells you how to care for your um, item once you are have it done. All right, let's head back over here to our overhead camera. Okay, so the weeding process quite similar to your regular vinyl. I'm just gonna pull all of these off. And then we will get these weeded out. Okay, so there's one. And I'm gonna leave this on here for just a moment. In fact, I think what we'll do, let's see, this is Vibes. I'm going to leave that with the other one. So we can go ahead and I think we will work on this particular one first. So when you go to weed your infusible ink, um, you will need to crack the infusible ink. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I have these little weeding boxes now, so I can 
cut off all of this and now I have a little piece that I can save. Um, I don't think I'm going to save anything on this one and or this one. Actually, I might, you know, if I want a test patch, I can cut off some of these. You absolutely do not have to. This is really, really small, but it's really good for test patches. So I do like to keep those kinds of things. I know that's a little, I guess I'm just weird that way. I don't know. But the, uh, the tote bags and stuff and the infusible ink is just, it's just too costly to have mistakes. So I like to make sure. Now, as far as bleeding, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to crack all of this and okay. Then I am going to pull off this around so we don't need this. And then I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pull off the box part. I'm going to leave the words and I've got some tweezers here to help me out if I need it. And I want to be just really mindful that I leave behind what needs to be left behind. And what I like about infusible ink is that it's really easy to weed. It just kind of comes up. Now I do have a little spot right here. Pull that off. And when you're doing this, all these tiny little pieces try and make sure that you throw them away like right away so they don't end up uh, stuck to something and then they end up on your project all right so we'll do this side right. so let me know down in the comments like what is your favorite to work with infusible e um the permanent vinyl, or well, just regular adhesive vinyl, permanent or regular, or the HTV, the iron on vinyl. What is your favorite to work with? Or is it you're like me? I love it all. It just depends on the project. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take a look at it to new adventures. So that's perfect. I'm just going to set that aside. Here is this one. For fabric things, I do try and use infusible ink as much as possible. But I did buy a couple of um, summer shirts. I did one, I did a patriotic one. It was so nice. I'll link that here in the corner for you. It was a big hit. Um, made it for Memorial Day, and I just did it. He's uh, HTV, the iron on vinyl for that, and it was perfect. I loved it. Okay, so here's the word say. Set that aside. And then this one. Now, when we do go to um, put these down, I will have to trim away some of the carrier, the clear carrier sheet, because I don't want things to overlap. And I don't want to infuse onto a carrier sheet. I want to make sure it's infusing onto my fabric. Make sure I get all my little sun pieces stained down. Every time I work with the sun, I tend to lose a ray here and there. I am hoping that we have some really good adventures this summer. I'm very excited to be done. Oh, our easy press is heated. Okay, so got a little piece in there. Some of these are some really tiny pieces. Okay, and then I'll just pull off this. So 
out. Oh, look, that looks so good. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this in. All right, and let's see, we're doing the say yes part. And I'm going to put it like this for right now. I'm just wanting to get it pieced together and I'm going to trim right close to the word yes at the top and probably at the bottom. So I made a, my niece a mug with infusible ink and she wanted tangled. Y'all, that was, that was a, a piece of work because, whew, um, I had to, I had to do some serious piecing on that one. That was a really hard one, but I was able to get it. Okay, so, going to have two new adventures and then because I want this to be in the middle and I need to make sure I don't cover up that that T right there I am placing them to get I'm making a full-size carrier sheet by just placing them together I'm putting the yes part onto this overhang. She let me do this. Get that stuck down like that. So now I'm gonna take a look at this. Does it look even? And that is ultimately what I want to look at. I'm going to place this here. That is very crooked. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so the yes piece what do we think? Does it look like it is? I actually think that's pretty good. And let's see, I've got about an inch on that side. About an inch on that side. Okay, it's definitely centered horizontally. And to be honest, I I think that it looks pretty good vertically. So I folded some butcher paper and I'm going to stick that in here. And we place butcher paper on top and we bring in our easy press. And I do need to change the time. So the time we go up to 40. There we go. All right, here we go. Okay, lift it up. Ooh. Hey, that sheet is very hot. This sheet is very hot. Okay, that is. If your hands are cold, this is like a little campfire. It is so, it is so warm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this down. I don't wanna move it, but I'm just gonna peel this up. I just wanna see. Okay, it's gonna need more time. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and I'm gonna, plug in my easy press mini because I want to go over that one more time 
Okay, so while that's heating up, let's go ahead and get our vibes. Okay, tell you, those weeding boxes are very, very helpful. Okay, here's our word vibes. I'm just going to set that aside. All right, I'm going to bring this guy in. Grab some parchment paper, or some butcher paper. Oh, that is another thing. So, oh, the Easy Press Mini, two things. The Easy Press Mini, you do slide around like, you know, like a regular iron. Um, but the, uh, I bought a huge roll of butcher paper off of Amazon because it does, I did a, I did a, quite a bit of looking. Um, Cricut says to use butcher paper. And I was like, well, why can't I use parchment paper? I have a ton of parchment paper. But um, you do need to use butcher paper and not parchment paper. Okay. So hopefully I got all of this square. Okay, that word is good. All right. I probably could go over that definitely darker. But, and I could go over that darker. Okay, so I think I'm going to call this good, unless there's a really grossly Okay, look, that's so much better. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. And definitely, I've noticed with this, you always seem to have, this doesn't come off as much, but it's definitely really dark here, so there there's our first project how fun is that i'm so excited okay well this is still very warm i'm going to go ahead and set this aside and let it cool and now i have a cute little bag for summer okay so we're going to get summer weeded out now this does have a lot of extra so my daughter came to me hmm, two days ago and it was kind of funny because um, she wanted, she wants me to make her a 4th of July shirt, which I was very excited because I had made um, shirts for both of us for the Super Bowl and then she proceeded not to wear hers. <laughs> But you know how preteens are. They they change their mind every five seconds. So, and then I had her help me. She wanted a pool bag. So we made a pool bag with sea turtles. And she helped me with that. So I think she's a little excited about having customized things instead of stuff that like everybody else has, which is which is fun. Okay, this should be a fairly easy, fairly easy weed. There's no real intricate parts. Okay, so here's my summer. And I actually, you know, now that I am looking at that, I really like this box. I'm thinking I want to leave this box there. So 
I don't know. We, we might have to think about this box in a minute, but essentially what I would be doing is we have to put, we have to put the B and the I, the little tittle for the I, like right there, like that. So I'm going to have to cut around this vibes up here. So this particular, this little eye, the tittle for the eye, I'm going to put right here. I'm just going to piece that in there just like that. That looks great. And then, let's see, I'm going to... This is, I guess, the most intricate part that I'm going to cut out these particular pieces here because I'm going to piece the vibes. I mean, I could just take it off of the carrier sheet. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull this off of its carrier sheet. very, very carefully. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to lay this one on top of now. So I've extended this carrier sheet down. We're going to find our B. And that's going to be the B is going to drive the bus. So I'm going to place that right in here. Perfect. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So now the question is, do I cut away portions of this box or do I take my chances that the black will just infuse on top of it? Okay, so let's flip this over and take a look. It actually looks really, really good. You can see where this is pieced together perfectly. Okay. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna grab my true control knife and I think that I'm gonna cut away You could totally choose not to do this, but I think I'm gonna Cut away where the letters are, like that. Because I am just, I really. I'm not sure. I've pieced a lot of infusible ink together. Like I've, you know, done this. Well, not like this intricate, but I've never laid one color on top of another color because I've just always pieced it. This is actually a very easy one to do. 
And I would suspect that the black would cover up the mermaid part. And I probably don't need to do this at all. Like this is probably overkill, but I just really like this box and I decided I want to keep it. So I don't want to I don't want to get rid of the box. Even though it was not part of the original design. Okay, so I promise that I am not crazy. My kids would tell you I am, but I think that's going to look really good. I like, I think the box is really going to make the design. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's get this onto our canvas tote. So here we go. That's going to go there. Got our canvas tote here. Going to lint roll. I noticed that the tote has, and I'm sure it would come out in a wash, but like a little smudge here and there. And I just want to know if I can kind of cover that up in a way. So now what we do is we're going to put your paper goes inside your bag and this is kind of the side I'm going to put this on there as well all right gonna let roll one more time okay so I'm gonna line up the box that's actually going to help me get this. Um, it's going to help me get this horizontally set. And then I'm just going to double check from side to side. Okay. Holy moly, that is, that is even like perfectly even. I can't believe I just did that. All right. Before I do that, we do have to press this. Just get out all the moisture. Okay. Okay. There we go. I'm going to put it down. The bag is still hot, so I'm going to lay this over. And we're going to press, finally. I think I'm going to have to do this in two separate things because the vibes at the bottom is just a little bit exposed down here. Okay, we're going to lift straight up. And I do need to move this down just a smidge. Okay, this is all pressed and I am really hoping this worked really well. So, Looks like I need to get those top little corners up there. This is what we mean by the, like where it kind of bleeds. Other than that, it looks pretty good. You have one tiny little spot right there. So 
So this particular carrier sheet is shrinking. Okay, I think I got those three little spots. So this is what it looks like. Oh, I've got a little spot right there, but you can see right here. I need to see how I have the B and the B. I, I didn't cut that particular part out of the B. So little experiment. It's not as vibrant as the others. And I've got I've got these two spots here, but I'm going to go ahead and call that good. I mean, this is for myself. It's for summer. I'm pretty pleased with that. There we go. We've got summer vibes. I, I think this was a really good choice for a summer bag. I, I took a lot of time to come up with what I wanted to put on it. And I'm very happy with the box and I'm very happy with putting the vibes and cutting out the little, the little places where they overlap. That was a really good choice. But that slice tool is very handy for this part in here. I use slicing a lot when I am doing infusible ink. And then we have this one here. So I would say two successes. All right. So I hope that you found this video was informative and inspiring. I would like to encourage you to get out there this summer and go have some grand adventures. Um, even if it's just in your hometown. So if you found this video helpful in any way, if you'll go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and don't forget to uh, hit that bell notification so you know the next time we post another summer craft, it would be great to have you as a subscriber. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.